Hey guys, welcome to the long-awaited chibi hair tutorial, as many of you have requested. <laughs> um, just a little warning, this video is probably going to be kind of long if you can't tell from the little timestamp. And um, there will be some time-lapse parts just so things don't get repetitive, and I'll try to cover as much as I can as quickly as possible to make things easier for everybody. And also, a quick note is this is not how, like, a how to strictly draw chibi hair. This is just how I draw chibi hair and the particular style that you see on my Ringo Yan DeviantArt account. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here we go. So, I wrote down a list of six different styles just to kind of give you guys a bit of a range. And obviously, there's a ton more different styles you could do, but hopefully, this will be enough to get you guys started. Just in case you haven't seen it already, I did do a chibi eye tutorial, and you're welcome to watch that as well. If you're just sketching out with me, just go ahead and start drawing some circles. I went ahead and put in the ears just so you could kind of see, I guess, how the hair would interact with ears. It's, it's not necessary. <laughs> I just put it there because it helps me. So let's get started with the short and spiky updo. Now I'm using Photoshop just to sketch, that's just because I am familiar with Photoshop and I'm comfortable with Photoshop, but you're welcome to use any program you want. You're welcome to even draw traditionally, it doesn't matter. Whatever is easiest for you. So the thing about drawing hair is that you kind of want to picture in your mind or have references if you need references of what style you're aiming for. And you also want to kind of have a basic understanding of how hair works and that you want to be able to understand like the weights kind of of hair and just how it flows, that sort of thing. So it probably would be helpful to do some hair studies where you look at pictures or in real life references of people and just kind of sketch what you see just to kind of get an idea of like hair coming out from the roots and like, you know, it all goes a certain way or something like that. But luckily for chibis though, things can be pretty simplistic, so you don't have to go all detailed to get the point across, and that's kind of what chibis are, they're just getting the point across of the character. So short and spiky. For short and spiky hair, I like to kind- it, you can shake it up, you can have like the longest part be in the center or you can have it kind of even throughout, so it's kind of like, you know, something like that. <laughs> what I usually like to do for short and spiky hair is kind of just get an idea of where I want to go. So like I want this part to be like this and probably gets a bit shorter as it comes out and goes down a bit and then we come toward the ear, which is why I said it's probably helpful to draw the ear just so you can kind of get an idea of where the hair is going to go. So, this isn't how I would normally draw the hair, this is just me trying to make things easier for people who are new to this. So just drawing like an outline of the shape of the hair can be helpful, like where, block in the hair of where you want it to go. And then, so right here would be the center point, and again, can vary a lot, I highly recommend looking at pictures just to kind of see how different hair can be. And then a little bit right here of the side coming down towards the ear. And that, that would be the basic shape of the hair. Really lower opacity of these things so you can kind of see just the hair better. <laughs> okay, here we go. So basic shape is there and you're welcome to kind of leave it like this. I mean, this can work for hair too, but since I want it to be spiky, I'm going to add a bit more detail in that I'm going to make the edges just a bit sharper. So kind of just... And for hair, it's okay to be random. Hair can be kind of random, but you still kind of have want to have a little bit of a form to it. Like it's not you know, going like this and then really short. I mean, you, you can't, it would just, it'd look a little bit weird. <laughs> You're kind of stepping into like crazy anime hair territory and like Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff. <laughs> and I like to keep things a bit 
more on the simple side. So you just kind of think of it like triangles and just follow the shape that you've made. It doesn't have to be, you know, beautiful, but... <laughs> and then if you want a little bit of, like, detail in here, you can have a little bit of spikiness. Just to show a, kind of like an uneven hairline. And then maybe a little bit up front. Just to show that it's a bit longer up front. You don't have to, again, like, can vary a lot. But there you go, there you go, that's kind of short and spiky updo. And then we can have him be super happy about his awesome new hairstyle. Okay, then next, uh, a short and messy hairstyle. So it's gonna be longer than this, but it's gonna be kind of uneven. So I like to find, whenever I start um, longer hairstyles, I like to find where the what's it called the part where the part is so sometimes I like to put them at the side just because I feel like it makes things more interesting than if I were to put it straight in the middle you can do it in the middle but again <laughs> it just lots of things vary and so particular taste I like to put it at the uh, side so from there you kind of just want to extend the hair from this point. So every piece of hair is going to kind of emanate from that point. So you can kind of see it all kind of follows that. So you're going to want the same thing when you get to the front of the hair where you want to be like, okay, the part will be right about there. So I'll start maybe right about there, maybe a little bit above and yeah, probably a little bit above, maybe like right there. So that's going to be where the hairline is. And so all the little spiky hair pieces are going to come from that. And these hair pieces are kind of just like swishing my brush and making like sharp points at the end. And that's just how I do the style. So again, you want to follow the flow. If you're like following along and things aren't matching exactly, that's totally fine. Hair can vary a lot and it's, you know, it's nice practice just to play around with things and see what you get. And then if you want a little extra detail, you're welcome to add a few pieces of just random strands. Again, I'm trying to follow this right here where all the hair is coming from that point. And he's happy too. <laughs> And then the next one, this one's going to be short, but a little bit more wavy than this one. This one's kind of straight. I mean, it's, it's, eh, it's got a little bit of wave to it, but I could keep going. I'll stop. <laughs> okay. Um, again, you want to know, find where a part is. So I could do a part here this time and go this way. So in this one, you kind of want to be more curvy lines. And again, this is a sketch, so it's not going to be like the most beautiful thing in the world. You're just trying to get the idea down first. And you can always do a second sketch later to clean up any of the work and make things look a little bit neater. Uh, 
And after I'm done with drawing these, I'll just show you another version just to show you just, you know, slightly different ways you can draw them. But again, there's loads of different ways you can draw hair. So now we're going to be doing long and straight hair. And for this, I'm kind of going to show you how I would do kind of a long side over here and then short bangs over here, just to kind of give you a little bit of variety. For this one, I'll go ahead and put the part right here. And typically at the part where the part is, <laughs> uh, that sounds funny. Um, typically where the part is, I add these little extra just stray hairs. You don't have to, but I kind of just, it helps more define it. You could also just kind of have this come in so you can know like, oh, the part is right here. Or you don't have to have a part at all. You could just go like straight, like all the way around and have it be flat. Better looking than that, something more like that. But I think the part makes it a lot more interesting and appealing to the eye. Though since this is long and straight, there's not going to be that much going on in terms of higher up on the head. So this will mostly be smooth. You can do a couple of stray strands, but I feel like that makes the hair look a bit more not straight, I guess. So I, I typically would just keep going straight down and then add the little flare at the bottom. Especially if I want it looking really straight, then I don't want to have much going on at the top because that would be distracting and makes the hair, like I said, not look that straight and I want it to be really straight. So following the part, we'd probably have it break right about here. So right about this part, I keep saying the word part, <laughs> right around that uh, area, I would separate uh, the hair and just to have kind of a long side or just make things look a bit more interesting, I could do something like that. And you can extend this if you want this to match the length of the rest of the hair. It's up to you. So you could have the hair come around and behind the ear if you want, or you can have it go in front of the ear. It's probably worth it to play around a little bit, as I keep saying. <laughs> I, have, I have to keep repeating myself, it's my job. <laughs> All right, so we did short and wavy, now we're gonna be doing long and wavy. So I guess I can put the part here. Yeah, that seems like a fine spot. Or I could put it in the middle, just to show you guys a bit of the middle. It don't matter. So as per my usual thing, I like to put little, little stray strands. <laughs> And for this one, you can have you can start have like see this is like smooth. You're not gonna want that exact smoothness, which is why I mentioned like wanting to look straight because then you're gonna have something I can draw today. Since it's long and wavy, the hair is gonna be a bit heavier, so I might have it be more smooth, or I can just be wavy from the start. It's up to y'all. You just want to keep that curve sort of thing. Oh, I forgot to draw a face on her. Okay, her other eye. We can just put a little bit right there. There we go. <laughs> this one. Yeah. Super happy. Okay. And the last one, I just kind of wanted to have a... show an example of a more smooth hairline. 
so you don't have to have something crazy like this. So I like to kind of draw out this idea because it's gonna I want it to be in the center of the face. So the hair line will meet in the center, kind of smooth back, and then curve around and then go toward the ear, and then that's where it'll cut off. And since her hair will be up, I'm going to keep it rather smooth all the way around, just slightly above your circle sketch marking the head. Since the hair sits on top of the head, you're going to have a little bit of space, not much. Like The tighter the hair is, the closer to the head it's going to sit, because you're kind of pulling it to the head when you're pulling it up. Okay. So it'd be something like that, so the hair would be kind of pulled in this direction sort of thing. And then from there you can do... You can put little uh, scrunchies over here. And the hair will bunch around the scrunchie and then you can kind of do whatever you want. <laughs> So that's just kind of sketching out a couple of different styles and then I'll go over lining it in a second and then filling in the flat colors and then coloring it. But before that I'm going to show you guys the other version I did so you can just see some of the differences. Okay, here's the other version I did. It's pretty similar, not much different, but you know, just play around with stuff, see what you get. Doesn't have to look exactly how I drew it. And that's kind of basically how I draw chibi hair. <laughs> Alright, see you guys in a minute for line art. Okie dokie then. So time for line art and you might have noticed, oh Sam, this isn't Photoshop. No, this is Paint Tool Sci. And there's a reason I use Paint Tool Sci, but again, you don't have to. And the main reason is this little thingy right here, which is very magical and Photoshop does not have it. <laughs> so it's called Stabilizer and it helps with your line art. It, it adds like an extra delay so your lines can be smoother and it's easier to control. It takes a little bit to get used to so if you've never used this tool before, definitely recommend just playing around with it first, like draw little circles and swirls and just you know figure out what each different one does. And yeah, so that's why I am in Psy right now. I also use Psy for the actual coloring part, not the flat colors. I switch back and forth, and you're going to have to put up with me as I'm doing this process. But very, again, this is not necessary. You could do this entire thing in Photoshop, this entire thing in Psy, or GIMP, or on paper. Doesn't matter. I'm just going through my process. <laughs> okay, so... For those of you who are using a computer, what I like to do is lower the opacity of the line art that I'm going to go over because I'm going to be using black and drawing a color on another color that's either the same or very similar is very hard to tell which line, which li of your lines are the right lines. So lowering the opacity can help you focus on the things that you're actually trying to trace. So make a new layer, or if you're drawing traditionally, you can get a light box or just straight draw right over your drawing or, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to walk through one of these, but then kind of time lapse through the rest of them, just so you're not sitting here bored as I'm repeating the same things over and over again. All right, so. The main thing with the line art is you're kind of doing almost the same thing that you did with the sketch, except it's just clean. So you want to take your time a little bit if you're using a stabilizer or if you're not using a stabilizer, obviously quick strokes will get that effectiveness faster. It's whatever is more comfortable for you. I don't know how you draw, but <laughs> okay, so just I like to add a little bit of pressure, not very much, and you can tell I'm using a tablet, you don't have to be, 
but you can kind of see the difference in the pen weight. It's not an unnecessary thing, but you know, it's just kind of there automatically because I have a tablet. <laughs> but you're kind of just making those points again, so you're just- and if you go past it, that's fine too. So if you have this little bit of extra, I'll make it more noticeable. So if you have- if this is the thing that is the hair, and then all of this is the extra but you don't want it, not a problem. Just take out your eraser, make it whatever size you need and then just, you know, go around and erase it. And to make things easier, just follow the, the stroke of your line to kind of keep with that original point. And then that is essentially how I do hair. I just take it one little stroke at a time, one little piece of hair at a time, and yeah. Okay, so for this, again, just following. And what I normally do anyway is I go past that line just because then I can get the exact point that I want and I can just erase that extra detail. And then that's kind of what I do for the rest of this. So I'll probably put in a bit of time lapse and I'll see you guys when I get back. Another thing you might have noticed is that I'm not exactly following my sketch and I do that sometimes, it depends. I might have changed my mind or want a different look. And just to make things simpler for myself, I'm going to close off the end points. But however, for this particular drawing, I would have included the ears in front of the hair. I just, it's all about coloring the hair and everything. So when I go to fill in the color, it's a lot easier to choose like the magic wand and then it can grab everything inside. Whereas if I had a gap, then it would grab everything. So that's the only reason that I'm closing these off there. Then the rest of this now is just cleanup. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the sketch in the way. Uh, let me get rid of some stuff. There we go. So this is just it by itself. It's probably a bit messier. I probably would have, I probably would fix this part to make it look a bit more even like this. But since this is just tutorial and not like a finished picture, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it as is. But just informing you, just so you know, I probably, I don't really like this that much, so I probably would erase it and change it. Okay, so then it's just the same process everywhere else.
Sometimes you'll need to make a separate layer, as I am in this case, just because I don't want to mess up this part right here. Because when I go over it, I don't want to have to like, fix it and redraw it, so I make a new layer so I don't have to worry about it. And then I can move it around without having to deal with messing with this part too. So that's kind of an advantage of working with uh, digital instead of traditional. And also we have the undo button and a few other tricks and stuff, but this can be done traditionally. It'll just take a, a little more patience. <laughs> And then when it's done, I can just merge them back together, and there we go. And since I can, kind of didn't like what I did here with the hair, I'm just uh, Control T to transform and free deform. There's a similar tool in Photoshop. Control T is the same keystroke to transform. And then when it's open to Photoshop, just right click in the transform box that'll show up and click. Uh, I think it's. Uh, you could use warp. You could just play around with them and see what you get. They all kind of do different stuff. I can't remember off the top of my head, I'd have to look at the list. But I can put a link in the description to some uh, keyboard shortcuts for Paint Tool Sci and Photoshop, just so you guys have a, like, a better understanding of what I'm doing, because I know I'm not explaining <laughs> all of my keystrokes. Sometimes it helps to uh, zoom out and not be so close to get those long, broad strokes. And for traditional artists, uh, what can help is using your whole arm instead of your wrist. That can help as well. That can help visual artists too. And just zooming out is just another way of kind of emulating the same thing. Plus it's bad for your wrist to draw <laughs> with your wrist anyway. <laughs> And again, I'm just connecting lines just so I don't have to, because uh, I'm only doing worrying about the hair right now, so I don't feel like outlining the face and everything. So that's the only reason why there's this weird curve right here. If it was the finished drawing, I would draw the actual face and the line art of the face would block in the hair. But since I'm not doing that because I feel lazy, <laughs> I am working extra hard by having this little extra line right here. The lazy man works the hardest. Okay, so that is all the hair lined. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing or anything. I tried to cover the gist of the things in the beginning, though granted for any of this at all at any time, you're welcome to comment below with any questions whatsoever. I'll do my best to answer them. And yeah, so now that we're done with this, I'm going to move on to flat coloring, and given that this is kind of following my process, I'm going to be going back into Photoshop, and as I repeat over and over again, you guys don't have to do that, just how I do my process with chibis. So I'll see you guys in another minute. Alrighty then, so we're back in Photoshop, this time for the flat coloring. 
which means it's just the base color of what the hair and accessories, in this case, are going to be. And I'm going to be using the magic wand tool, which is this little star over here, or a W in Photoshop. Uh, you can, I don't know if there is a shortcut unless you set one up for Psy. Again, links and descriptions for shortcuts. Okay, so we need a new layer. I'm putting it under my line art layer and I'll label it so you guys can see it. I don't know if you can see this detail that well, but colors. Okay, and then just so I can start to save myself some room, I'm going to group these together. Okay, so for this magic wand, select, you just click inside the little section you want. And since it selects it here, up here you have the tolerance and the lower you go, the less it'll select, I guess, like the less, the more picky it will be. So if you have like a dark yellow and a light yellow and you have this tolerance really low, it'll only pick one of the yellows. But if you have it really high, it'll pick both of the yellows because they're really similar colors. If that makes sense. Okay, so um, since this isn't going to select everything and plus you have all these little corners, uh, what I like to do is go to select, modify, expand, expand it by two pixels at least. One pixel is usually not enough. Even two pixels sometimes isn't too much, but given the size of my line art, anything more could breach sections of the line art. And it's just easier if I go back in myself and fill in any missing spots which is why one of the reasons why I have a gray background so I can better see the colors. And for each of these hairs, I'll go ahead and just pick a different color. So this guy will get some nice fiery red and you can already see these little sections, these little spots. And it may not seem too noticeable when you zoom out, but it's still kind of there and you'll definitely see it for the coloring. So I just like to go over really fast with a brush and just fill in little spots. So anywhere where I can see that gray poking through. And it's just the same process for everybody else. So just one more time, magic wand tool, select inside, select, modify, expand. I wish there was a short shortcut for that. <laughs> if there is one, please tell me, but I don't think there is. Um, expand by two pixels. It depends on your line art. You're welcome to go above or below that. Pick a different color. Be rainbow party. All right, so now he's got orange hair. Zoom in just to make sure there's no gray showing. Fill in the gray. So these aren't old characters. They're young. They don't have any gray hair. What are you talking about? One thing to keep in mind when you're picking a color is for my particular technique, the hair uh, base is typically more the highlight. So you're going to want to pick, again, if you're just copying my style, which is fine, um, you're going to want to pick something a bit lighter because it's going to get darker. The only additional highlights are do, I do are white. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> You'll see, you'll see. If you haven't seen my chibi gallery, I definitely recommend checking that out so you can get an idea of what's going to be happening. Her face just completely disappeared. It's like Cousin It! Is anybody going to know what I'm talking about? Or am I too old for that? Am I too old? <laughs> my parents always compared me to Cousin It because I got that hair. Although my hair is more like this. It's, it's curlier than this though. <laughs> I have two cousin its. And since she has an additional accessory, um, I'm going to go ahead and do that on a separate layer. And there we go. That's how I do flat coloring. And then I'll see you guys again when I go back to Psy for the coloring. Okay, almost done. Back in Psy for the coloring of the hair. And for this, I use a very specific tool in Psy called the marker tool, which is over here. And if you have Psy, here are my settings. 
that's probably good. Okay, here are my settings. Um, if you're in Photoshop, there you can use a bunch of different brushes. You can change opacity or flow, I think it's called. And then you can just try changing settings to get something similar, or you can use the scatter brush tool, which I love to use for blending, which I have a very old tutorial on my channel if you want to check that out. Or if you're more familiar with DeviantArt, I have it on my main DeviantArt account, which is linked through my Chibi account. <laughs> it's in the description. I'll, I'll put that in the description. Save you all some trouble. Okay. So, new layer. I make it a clipping group, which just ensures that it will not go outside of the colors. So just show you what I mean. Uh, get white. All right, so this will now not, you notice how it's not going anywhere but in the colors. So that's what a clipping group does. It's really cool. You should get used to it. Because <laughs> I like to use it a lot. All right, so coloring hair. Change size and brush. It's a bit big for this one. Okay. It's important to think of a light source, and for my chibis, it's generally from like, oops, you're not going to be able to see that. <laughs> it's generally from one side or the other side. I, temp I uh, usually don't go like really dynamic and go like from below or straight above or from behind or whatever. You can, it's just different lighting effects. I would suggest looking up tutorials on that specifically if you want to get more crazy. But for this, I'm just going to keep things simple and either do it from, and I'll probably do it from this side for all of them. So marker tool and what it does, well, first let me just get a color. And I like to go a little bit outside of, like I don't just go straight, pick this color and just go darker. I go darker, more saturated, and also either more warmer or cooler. In this case, I'm going to go cooler. It just makes things look a bit more interesting and just appealing and it keeps it from being really gray looking and bland and obviously I'm just testing colors just to make sure everything looks all right all right so for this you're going to want to do I'll make it really <laughs> you're going to do quick strokes of just up and down and that's kind of all that this is it's just a repeat of that over and over and over again all right so you can either start from the bottom or the top doesn't matter. And I kind of just think about where shadows are going to be, where I want highlights to be, since the red base is going to be part of the highlight. And again, these are chibis. It's not going to be realistic. So it's okay if things look a little bit odd or strange or something. And in this case, I just did a quick swoop down the side. And I'm going to do a little bit over here. And then that would be the initial first pass base. So then what I would typically do is either on a new layer or on the same layer. It depends. It's up to you on how many layers you want to use. I'd get another darker color. And just go over a little bit, not completely over everything again. So just to kind of show you guys how it would look different. Uh, like this. Darker, a little more purple. And then you don't want to fill up as much space as you did with the initial pass. Kind of makes it a bit more blended of a look and the shadows aren't as dramatic. And if things aren't as smooth as you want, you can use the water tool or for Photoshop, there's uh, the scatter brush tool, which again, just link will be in the description for how I use the scatter brush. Cause it's the smudge tool and yeah, it's really cool. And if you haven't used it before, I definitely recommend checking it out. And if you're a, uh, if you're a mouse user, it's also really helpful because then you can like blend without having a tablet. And I guess for anybody who's using traditional tools, you can just color however you normally color, or if you have markers, you kind of use the similar motion of just that flick. I'll show you guys again. Just that flick where you have um, 
kind of more pressure over here and you can release the pressure as you go. <laughs> it's just, it's just a feeling that it just makes me think of little devil horns, which is really funny. <laughs> And then sometimes I kind of like to have like little connecting lines right here, just so it's not completely red space. Just makes things a bit more interesting. And there we go. That's how I would do that. And then for the highlights, the highlight highlights, not just the red color. This is when I would use pure white. Stick with the marker. Um, probably lower the size of it a little bit. And then I would go where I'd want the highlights to go. So I kind of do like this little circle motion following the hair where the highlights, the red part of the highlights are. I'm kind of just swirling my brush around, making little circles. And then the next part is using the water tool and you kind of go right up to the edge. You don't want to go all the way down. I mean, you can, but if we're matching my style, I don't go all the way down. I leave a little bit of... I leave that sharp edge at the bottom. Kind of gives it a faded look, and I kind of like it. I used to do a different way, and then I switched to this way. You can check my chibi gallery. I'll put a link in the description. And you can look at some of my older stuff. I used to do something completely different. Not, co not completely different, but different. <laughs> Just gonna erase a little bit so I kind of got past the strands right here. And then we're gonna go to the pen tool. And you can see my size settings right here. For Photoshop, it would just be the normal, regular, hard round brush. And add in the sharper, stronger highlights, so. These will just be like little dots, kind of wherever the highlights are, or, you know, get a little fancy and do little stars. I typically group the dots in either two or three, and uh, with little sparkles, I put one or two dots with it. Personal preference, it doesn't matter. And then that's essentially how I would color this. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do it for the rest of them in time lapse. And for I'll do the next two in time lapse, and when I get to the long hair, I'll talk again. <laughs> so I'll see you guys then. All right, I lied. I'll quick talk right here just to, I forgot to mention this. Um, it didn't come up with this one because this one doesn't really have that part that I did with the rest of them. But for when I shade in the hair, I typically follow the part. So the shadows all kind of lead back. So they follow the flow of the hair back to the part. You know, as best as they possibly can. Obviously you're going to have some wild strands like this one because it's a bit more wild hair.
forgot to add the sparkles. There we go. I don't really have any specific pattern for them, I just kind of put them around randomly. And for long hair, uh, what I typically do is if it's long enough where it requires a separation where there's like a dark and then there's the green and then there's another dark, that's what I'll typically do. And it'll probably make more sense once I show you. Kind of rushing the rest of these a bit just because I feel like the point is kind of across. For the most part. And I'm feeling a bit lazy. <laughs> okay. So since the light is going to be coming from over here, actually I kind of don't like that part right there. Go over that again. But anyway, since the light is coming from this side, that's why I did that one big stroke over here. Oh, that's a little bit better. Okay. So this is where her head would be. Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> this is where her head would be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in with a dark green. So since her head would be right about here, there's gonna be a little bit of shadow from it. So that's where I would put the shadow. Just the same stroke where you press hard at the base and then you flick. And then this is what I'm going to be talking about where we're going to have that little bit of separation where it's going to be dark down here, but we're going to have another layer of the light green. So now we have a second uh, highlight section. In the case where you have a little section where you don't have an end hair to have that hard bottom part at, like that hard base part, what I do is I just keep it fuzzy at both ends. So what you can do is flick in both directions, but I usually put a lot less pressure on it just to keep it as soft as possible. So then that would be another second little section of white highlights. Now when you use the water tool you don't want to press too hard because then you actually get some white to show up because it's not just a blending tool, it also actually paints. So you don't want to press too hard, you want to keep your pressure pretty light when you're using the water tool. For Photoshop it doesn't really make that much of a difference because if you're using the scatter brush then it, it, yeah, it doesn't paint, it just scatters the stuff. So then you kind of just do a similar thing with this one, where you're going to have that part of separation again. And for wavy hair, I typically put the shadow where it's concaves. <laughs> I really need to learn the difference between those two words. Um, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's concaves. Where it goes in and then have the highlight where it bulges back out. And then I just drag the shadow all the way across. So it would go all the way over here. So then you need to get that additional shadow right here, which gets rid of that highlight layer. And if things aren't blending as well as you want them to, that's when I come in with the water tool and just 
quickly fix that. That's a lot of strokes, so it's just a bit of patience. But again, since the light is coming from this side, I'm going to have that line right here just to kind of emphasize that. Now for this, since the hair is being pulled back, I'm going to kind of shade it similar to the first one. Okay, and then last little touch, I'll just quickly shade in the little hair scrunchies. Okay, so I'll move over to Photoshop for the very, very last step. But again, you can still use Psy for all of this. <laughs> so yeah, see you guys in another minute. Alrighty then, it's the last step. And in this step, I typically either use Photoshop or Psy. It depends on my mood. Recently, I've been using Photoshop more. But just because I want to show you guys a little extra thing that I do with my chibis, I went ahead and just felt like doing this in Photoshop. Alright, so go to the light art layer, lock it. Oh crap, I think inside it's uh, like lock transparency or log opacity. It's in that little layers box. It's not the clipping group, it's the other one. I forget what it's called, what they name it in there. <laughs> but anyway. Since we just did hair, it's very easy. I'm just going to use the lasso tool and just select everything. Pick the darkest spot I can find. Darken it a bit more. Change it a little bit. Then since it's locked, I can do whatever I want and it'll only stay on that layer. So I'm going to use the gradient tool, drag, and bam! The line art is colored. So just lasso it, or you can use the uh, marquee tool and just do that. But I mean, it does the same thing, you're just selecting it. So pick a color, darken it a little bit. Yeah, that could be darker. I don't like going too close because I want it to still stand out, but I also want it to go away a little marquee marks. There we go. Okay. I still want it to stand out as the line art, but black is really strong for line art, so I like to use a color one just to kind of soften it up a bit. Kind of just eyeball it, see what you like. As you can tell, it has little scrunchies and it did that too, so what I would then do is go in, do the same thing, but since I can't do the 
selection tool because it's connected to the rest of the liner. I just manually go in with the brush and just do my best to color as close as possible without, you know, going into the hair section. It's not going to be perfect, but it's not really all that noticeable when you zoom out, kind of like the little gray specks from the beginning. But I still like to be a little meticulous with it. So any bonus step would be uh, going down to here and color balance and then just adjusting the colors if you want things to be a little bit different. Sometimes I like to have it a bit more... I, what I typically do is go more red, magenta, and then blue. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this was understandable. Again, any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll put a bunch of helpful links in the description if I can remember them all. <laughs> And if you have any other suggestions for tutorials in the future that you would like to, uh, me to do, that you'd like to see, you're also welcome to comment below. And yeah, I'll put a little bonus video at the end of just me actually coloring the hair of a chibi, just so you can kind of see that. You're also welcome to look at all my other chibi drawing videos on this channel to give you more of an idea. It's all time lapse, but it'll still give you more of an idea of how I go about coloring and drawing different hair. And there's also my chibi gallery you can go through and just look at all the different hairstyles that I've done and you can try and copy them, see how it looks, try things out, experiment, whatever helps you in figuring this out. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So hope you enjoyed, hope this helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!